Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the latest accessory for the X2 D1 laser, and that is the RA2 Pro, which is their newest rotary, and that will allow us to do everything from toothpicks all the way up to baseball bats. So let's jump right in. So what is the big deal about the RA2 from Xtool? Well, it's more than just a roller rotary. It does come with that base option, but it adds a leveler, it adds an end stop, and it also adds, my favorite, is a jaw chuck accessory that will actually grab onto a lot of other objects and allow you to uh, rotate them without having to rely on them being able to lay just on the rollers. So. Uh, we're going to jump in and look at those different configurations and see just what you can do with them. The RA2 Pro comes well packaged and as you would expect from MakeBlock, uh, some quality hardware and includes all the tools and accessories to set this up in all four configurations. Also included is a well-written user manual in multiple languages that will walk you through each of the configuration settings. So right off the bat, people are going to ask, what is the difference between the RA2 and the original rotary? Uh, and the question is, can I just buy the parts to upgrade my existing one? Well, no. Uh, as you can see, this one is longer. This is the new RA2. This is the original one. Uh, and the big difference is being, you've got a lot longer length here. Um, and then you have these mounting holes that allow you to add the rotary chuck. In addition to that, you have this end piece here that allows for a pulley gear to be added for the rotary chuck and then in, as well as you can actually remove this piece and slide it to the other end uh, giving you even more flexibility in, in that so uh, unfortunately no you cannot just buy the upgrade pieces for the original rotary you do need to buy the whole new kit so you can use the RA2 just as you did the original one uh, with the rollers um, holding the device on it and they are the the second roller is interchangeable with the three different spots and that allows you uh, to work with items that in the A slot anywhere from uh, 3 to 50 millimeters in diameter and if you move it into the B slot like it is now that would do anything from 45 to 60 millimeters in diameter uh, and then all the way out to C would be items that are bigger than 60 millimeters in diameter um, it does require you to remove a bolt here and um, then move this over to the sides to adjust that and so you'd have to pull this bolt out put it back in uh, but that adjustment is fairly simple and then that would let you work with the different diameter devices so this setup works best with items that are straight and tubular where you can set them in the device and whenever you're using this I, I suggest you have it to where it reaches all the way up against the stop so that it doesn't want to walk on you that'll give it something to rest up against and you won't want to move around too much when set up with just the rollers, you can also use the support module that is adjustable up and down so that you can use the rollers for an object that is not that might have a taper to it. So what you do is you would set this, set your object in there and you want them fairly square and then you would bring the end up and you can use their included level so that your, your top surface as it rolls should be level. One thing that I found when using this, however, is that if it wasn't perfectly aligned, it would walk one way or another. So one thing that can help with that is to use rubber bands. By putting the rubber band around the lip of the glass, it'll help keep this from walking up and down. All right, now let's go ahead and switch this from the roller setup to the, the chuck rotary setup. Uh, now they include a couple of Allen wrenches. Uh, and they are actually a two and a two and a half millimeter. So I like using my uh, straight wrenches for these, uh, but they do include all the tools to do this. So uh, what you want to do is you want to flip this over and you're first going to remove these two. And that will loosen up these. This first one just pops out and you'll see there's just a gear that you can then slide back in. I find it easier to do it down here where the belt is wider, but you can always slide that back in pop this in place, put the screws back in from the bottom, and that's how you reattach it. On this other one, we've loosened up the screw on this side, but we also have to loosen up the bolts, or the set screws, on this collar that are holding it onto that shaft. So, let's go ahead and grab your two millimeter wrench. Just loosen that up a little bit, and there's two of them. 
So we'll go ahead and loosen up the second one. And that should allow this assembly to pop right out. Next thing we need to do is add the pulley gear onto the back of the stepper motor. And there is a cutout in the bottom right there where you'll be able to get at these uh, set screws. So you just wanna make sure they're loosened up so you can slide them on. And then you'll notice in there, there's gonna be a flat spot. You wanna make sure that one of the set screws engages that flat spot. This one right here, and then just rotate it to where that flat spot is sitting straight up, so where it's straight up now. Then we can set this in there with one of the set screws straight up and then come in from the top. Tighten that down and then rotate to your other set screw. Snug that up against there. You want to make sure they're tight, but don't over torque these. As you, they are aluminum, so you can strip them. Okay, with the uh, timing pulley on, you want to take your timing belt, slide up over that gear, grab your chuck rotary adapter, you want to slip this around the belt while it's loose, make sure it's engaged on both sides, and then this is going to sit down in kind of this notch out here where these A and B holes are. Just kind of get that lined up, grab provided and had machine screws. And then that will drive the rotary. This, you can open it and tighten it with your hand. And then when you need to really snug it up, they have a key that fits into these holes on the back and we'll let you tighten it. Now you could use this just as is. These are metal anodized aluminum pieces but they do provide uh, some optional jaws that are made of more of a uh, silicone plastic and so these actually fit on top of these either that direction or this direction depending on what size you need. They also have some larger ones you see these are kind of the double stepped ones, these are the single ones, they're larger. And then there's also the post option that these will screw in here at different sizes or different uh, depths to allow you to work with rings and other small objects. Now in addition with this, they provide you this end post that this can slide in here and it is centered with that and then you can tighten this down so that if you had uh, an oblong object or a sphere you would actually put these jaws in on one side and then this on the other to grab hold of that sphere on either side and then you can um, use that in your rotary as well. One of the advantages of the jaw chuck is that you can actually grab it from the inside of a round object. So here we can push it onto the cup, we can snug it up and then use the key to really cinch it in. And you want to just kind of turn it by hand a little bit, make sure that it's actually centered and that you don't have too much wobble. Maybe just tweak it on those rubber feet just a little bit until it's running nice and smooth. And then now it's going to turn and there's no, it's not gonna walk or anything. So here we have the chuck rotary in action with a coated tumbler, and this is a straight taper. As you see, I chalked it up with a block to make sure the tumbler was level with the laser head surface. So let's just watch this run and check it out. In addition, a similar setup, just this time with glass, uh, coated the tumbler with tempera paint, and we're running the laser across that to engrave into the surface of the glass. 
right now we're going to add on the tail module so that we can secure this egg this wooden egg and uh, that just helps keep it centered uh, the jaws will still rotate it and uh, we'll burn in a nice little happy easter logo onto the wooden egg one of the nice features of the using the chuck rotary is that you can use on a very small diameter items. So here we are testing a six millimeter, about a quarter inch dowel. I'm just gonna run a little test burn into it and see how it looks. Now that the dowel went well, I wanted to test something really small. So I grabbed a round toothpick, which is just under two millimeters in diameter and uh, chucked it up into there, got it snug, made sure it was level, and then using the uh, laser finder, I was able to get it right about in the center. It was kind of tough to see, um, but let's burn this and just see how it looks. I don't know how practical that is, but there you go. I've labeled my toothpick. All right, we've switched it back to its uh, original orientation. Now we're gonna show uh, how you would use these posts. So we need to uh, first take the rubberized chaws, jaw chuck extensions off. Then these posts have a ball end on one side, threaded end on the other. You can just go ahead and screw these into whichever one uh, they're going to make sense here. They all do need to be in the same so that they you know, are circular. Just thread them in and for most things I've found that just getting them the finger tight, you don't want to wrench these in and ruin the threads. But you tighten those down. And again, those will tighten and loosen. And the big example for this is to be able to put a ring on there. So you can do it one of two ways. You're gonna do the outside engraving and slide this in, get it kind of into that notch. Once again, just tighten that up. And that will spin your ring that way for engraving on the outside or as you may have seen on their live video, and we may try this in a later video as well, you can open them up so that the ring will sit on the inside of them. I wanna make sure you get these lined up nice and straight. Which takes a little bit of doing. Snug it up. And then, if you elevate one side like this, you'd have to hold this up with a prop. You can actually get the laser to engrave on just the inside edge, while holding this at an angle. All right, so we've uh, put the stainless steel ring in the chuck, and we're gonna try to engrave the outside. We've got it centered as best we can, and uh, we'll check it out once it's done. And there you go, something special for the Lord of the Rings fans. Now the next advantage is, it's supposed to be able to deal with things with handles and such. So you can put this mug on here. So again, we're gonna put it on the inside. I'll tighten this up. So now it's grabbing it, but now you see if it rotates around, it's gonna hit this. Well, they thought about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cup off temporarily. We're gonna move this around. So there's two screws holding this whole part onto this base plate. What you need to do is take those out. Take this plate and we are actually going to put this on the opposite end, lining up those holes again. Put your 
screws back in. So now you have it on the opposite end. What this allows you to do is you can raise the whole thing up by using a support piece. Then you can reattach your mug. Tighten it down. Now as long as you raise it up as high as you need to, the whole thing will rotate all the way around. Now, if you have a really heavy object here, you notice this is pretty tippy, you may want to put something on the opposite end as a counterweight. So I have a steel block there, and now that's not going to go anywhere. All right, as you see, we've got it blocked up, and we're just testing to make sure it's spinning true, and we'll go ahead and burn an image into the stainless steel mug. One of the cool things that Xtool did is that they thought of other lasers as well. You can use this rotary tool with many other lasers as long as they uh, use a typical pinout. Uh, so in this case, this is an Atom Stack clone by Per Gear. Uh, what we need to do is we need to unplug the cable from the Y-axis stepper, and they've provided these two adapters. We'll pick the one that fits and plug the uh, correct end into there that adapts it, and then we take the wire that's coming off of the rotary device, plug that into the adapter, and then we would set this in here, make sure your cables are out of the way, you'd need to elevate the laser, and then with, and then in the software that you're using to control your laser, uh, you can go ahead and configure this rotary uh, to this laser, and it'll work just as well as in on the X-Tool D1. So, um, great option that they're looking out for other laser engravers as well, that uh, this tool, um, this is a multi-function tool for multi-lasers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the RA2 Pro Rotary Attachment from X-Tool. I plan to be doing more projects with this. I have some in mind as well to uh, include mixing both my CNC machine and the X-Tool D1 laser with this rotary attachment to uh, maybe create some cool projects. So um, we did a lot here just to kind of give you a good overview of what this machine can do and the different features and different configurations of it. So I hope you learned something. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do try to get back to them as uh, quickly as I can. Or maybe I'll even make another video to answer one of your questions. Uh, if, uh, if I've earned it, I hope you can give this a like. Maybe even consider subscribing to, to uh, catch my future videos as well. There'll be links down below for uh, this product and others. Uh, some of them are affiliate links. I hope you don't mind. Uh, if you do uh, consider yourself purchasing some of these items that you see here, uh, using those links does help me at no additional cost to you. As always, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was educational or at least kind of fun. And uh, stay tuned. We'll see you next time.